All these issues about economic pessimism, declinism, populism, and inequality. You sounded very pessimistic tonight, sir. Was that your intent? No, not at all, because what's existing is very pessimistic, but I'm very optimistic if we did the right things, and that's a big if. But uh, I, I think the quality of life is going down. I think real income is going down. I think there is a disparity between the poor and the middle class and Wall Street. I think some people are doing exceptionally well. There are more billionaires than ever before. But if you go out to Main Street and you go out and campaign, you'll find out there's a lot of people very, very unhappy because they do need to have two jobs and their standard of living is going down. What's the answer? But Larry, you, you know, well, you have to have sound money. You cannot destroy a currency de deliberately and debase a currency currency and have inflation resulting. That is, the prices go up and they always go up unevenly and the poor people suffer the most. But if you get the money first, if you get it from the military industrial complex or the medical profession, how about the me medical industrial I industry right now? They I get think the, the money first. Some people, including myself, I actually spoke with, I uh, interviewed Secretary Condoleezza Rice this morning. I don't think the military departments, the budget for the military gets enough money to defend this country. Well, the, the defense doesn't get enough, but none of it goes to defense. The defense is worse than ever. But we, if you add up everything that we do to manage our world empire, it's close to a trillion dollars a year, and I can, def I can defend those statistics. You don't need all this, and, and our defense is done. The military equipment's in worse shape. We're under greater threat than ever before because our foreign policy is actually setting the stage for a more likely attack on us. So I think everything we do is wrong. I'd spend more money on defense, and uh, yeah, we spend more money on the military, on stuff we don't need in war we don't need to fight and we forget about our own borders and we forget about taking care of ourselves we were protecting korea a lot better than we were protecting washington dc well, on 9 11. Right, so let me, let me, we're, we're disoriented let me go back to some of the issues here first of all a lot of the discussion at the beginning of the debate in the first hour was about budget cutting uh, that's one of the reasons the republicans seem to have lost the house and the senate yes the war in iraq was a big drag but so was uh, special earmarks and corruption and over bloated budgets are there specifics you can give us this evening, sir, to reduce the federal budget? Yes, I would start with the overseas military expenditures. You can cut hundreds of billions of dollars there, and we'd be better off for it. But I don't believe in the Department of Education, the Department of Energy. I mean, the Department of Edu Agriculture, why do we have to keep pouring out these billions of dollars worth of subsidies? Why do we subsidize the uh, energy industry, always giving subsidies, pretending that we know which is the best energy source? So I say there's a lot we could do, is it but time we have for to change... Is it time for Republicans? This is a serious question because it goes back to the original Gingrich Congress 15 years ago. Is it time for Republicans to start calling either for massive, uh, massive shrinking of certain government departments or in some cases total abolition? Is that what it's going to take to jar the Republican Party and get them to move back in the direction of limited government? Yeah, but you can't do it with the crop that's running the party right now. I mean, I'm the stranger in there because I advocate limited government. So if you have the crop that's coming along, I mean, they are, they're big government people, big taxers, big spenders. They won't ever touch the military budget. So, no, there's not much hope. It's right. pretty bad when the Democrats are more conservative than the Republicans when it comes to fiscal affairs. All right. <laughs> Congressman Ron Paul, we thank you, as always, sir. Good luck on the campaign trail. So Back to the panel. Robert Rice, what would you think of that? It's time to get rid of whole departments and agencies. Well, Is departments and agencies, you know, it's, it's very easy to talk about getting rid of departments and agencies. But what Ron Paul said, interestingly, he touched on agricultural price supports yeah. and subsidies. He touched on military bloat. Uh, you know, these are things that most other mainstream Republicans, most of the big candidates, are not talking about at all. They ought to be talking about them. And, you know, while the Democrats talk about the insurance companies and the drug companies, it's, it's very important for the Republicans to start talking about some of the big Big companies and industries that are acting irresponsibly. I think the government is acting irresponsibly, Steve Moore, and correct me if I'm wrong, was the phrase balanced budget used today? Did anyone I, say I, I want a it. balanced budget and even call for sort of what I call dick army type spending caps? No, this this was this gets right back to your point about where's the beef in this debate. I mean you asked them on, on your interviews, the interviewers asked them during the debate, you know, name some specifics. I didn't hear any specifics. And I just think that what I heard from uh, Ron Paul, I don't agree with him a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I think if Republicans came out with a Reagan-esque 
you know, Grace Commission, we're going to clean out this government. Tell folks there just would be, Grace, Grace Commission. Grace Commission came up with hundreds and hundreds of recommendations to save oh, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in the agencies. And that, you know, most of those recommendations were never implemented. They were put together 25 years ago. Why, why not a new Grace Commission? Scott Rasmussen, does your polling show a desire in the Republican heartlands in the precincts that are going to vote for this kind of across-the-board budget slashing? You've just told me people are pessimistic. You've just told me wage inequality is a big problem. Do they want the government to downsize? You're, you're looking at this the way an economist would, really? which I, I can forgive really? you for. No, but I'm most, looking at it as a political but guy. Most, what should the but Republicans most, do Most to Americans win? are not economists, and most Americans aren't political people either. They aren't looking to say, gee, we're frustrated about this. Here's the plan we want. They want somebody to connect with them and explain why a, a program can work. Steve talked about we need a Reagan-esque program. Well, you can't have a Reagan-esque program without a Reagan. Mm, yep. uh, the last time there was this kind of pessimism and frustration, Frustration was in the late 70s, and Ronald Reagan redeemed the Republican Party at that time, partly because of who he was and the way he was able to connect some theories with the concerns of working people, but, with the concerns okay, of everybody, that, and that's what's missing said, in these debates. But having said that, what about the issue? You hear it a lot. Maybe it's politically untrue that deep budget cuts would play well to the Republican base and help somebody, whether it's Thompson, McCain, uh, Ju uh, Giuliani, Romney, Huckabee, whoever, help them win. That's the deal. Is that wrong? Maybe the Republicans, maybe this is bad advice. Everybody, everybody will say, even, even Democrats will say they would like less government. What's your poll show? Polls show that people want less government. But How much? Versus higher taxes? Versus higher taxes. But when you talk about specifics, it's hard to build support for them. Wouldn't and this be the year? This would be the year. Look, no. this is the year to overturn conventional wisdom. They always say when you talk specifics, all the interest groups go at you. I say people this year would like to see a stand-up guy or woman go for real <laughs> you know, budget restraint. No, no, let me respond to you. I want to get yeah. this out. I think this is the year to go for it. Larry, they and say put that. It out they there. say that every year <laughs> and every election cycle. You have Republicans, especially some Democrats, say, "Well, we're going to cut government and we're going to lower your taxes." I and you know something? Main Street doesn't believe it anymore. The fact well, of the right. matter is, unless people are specific, Main Street says, no, I want some help. I need some help with every bit of my daily routine, with my, with my bills. But, yeah. you know, you guys in Washington, you political no, professionals. I have been in Washington you guys, 25 you years. You say the same thing over and over, and I'm just not well, going to believe I it Well, then I say the hell with it. Well, I'd love to see right. there. Listen, yes, listen. One politician, go, one of these presidential candidates, go to Iowa and say, no, you know what? I'm uh, not for nothing. Uh, right. See, Somebody that's what I want. Balls that's what I want. Be, yeah. That's exactly what we need. Right. And Someone you know, to get up and say that. Right. And, and they would not do well in Iowa. <laughs> yeah. And, but, 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 but what about the no, rest of listen, the primaries? We're talking about these issues. When we poll people right now on a series of 10 issues and we ask them to rank them in importance, the biggest issue Wasteful government spending. is government ethics and corruption. Yes. Right. And a majority of unaffiliated voters don't trust either party on right. it. Right. And that is and the problem. And that's earmarks. It's lobbyists. Yes. It's, it's what Robert said a minute ago. They don't believe you. Right. And also, why should they dirty. believe Republicans when this administration <laughs> has not seen a spending bill it doesn't that's like until that's just that's last it. month? During the, during the Clinton years. Better late than yeah. never. <laughs> <laughs> Better <laughs> late than never. That's my <laughs> attitude. Bush the budget <laughs> warrior. <laughs> do, do you remember what, when uh, President Clinton and Newt Gingrich announced we're going to balance the budget yes. and they had this yeah. deal and we're going to yes. cut? This was good. One percent of Americans believe they would really accomplish but those things. they did balance the budget. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk much more about it. It is your money, your vote, and your opinions. Please log on to CNBC.com. Let us know what you think and let us know who won tonight. And email us at your opinion at CNBC.com. A lot of dot coms. Me. All right. If we can't cut spending, at least we can lower tax rates. How about a single rate flat tax rate? Steve Moore. We're going to debate that later. Republicans are giving us their plans for.